Good evening, everybody. Um, I hope I can live up to the advanced billing. I, sound, I was going to say, boy, I want to shake that guy's hand. It sounds pretty good. Uh, yes, my name is Marcus Brent. Uh, you can see some of the models I've got here. I'll be talking about that. I'm going to be addressing the question of the cathedral from the point of view of uh, the style of building that the building was built in. That's kind of a circuitous way of saying in pre-industrial building. This building was built, if you look at some of the old photographs, with nothing but muscle, uh, no electricity, no steam power, um, very much the same way that the cathedrals were built in the Middle Ages, um, and, and they built it in the 1870s. So um, I was supposed to hit escape, and it was supposed to go to my right. Let's try this. Let's try, oh my goodness that one. And we'll go to do this. Sorry about this, folks. I'm a very good carpenter, but I'm not a very good uh, IT guy. Let's see. Slideshow. From the beginning. All right. That's a start. <coughs> That's me. That's the cathedral. As it was, and pretty much in five or six years, has the potential of being again, more or less. That's what it was, um, God, that would have been shortly after the quake. Um, of course, now the, uh, the bell tower is down to, to nothing. Uh, the bells are in storage somewhere. <coughs> but Christchurch isn't the first and only building that's been damaged like this. This is Ypres in Belgium, 1915, when the Germans opened up they're big guns. Uh, this is the wool hall. Uh, you can see the scaffold there. The, the stonemasons were just finishing up a major restoration of the wool hall when the Germans showed up, and uh, they didn't quite complete their restoration. This is uh, Ypres Cathedral at the end of the war when the guns fell silent. Uh, many New Zealand families lost loved ones in a little ridge outside of town here called Passchendaele. Uh, up at the top of the photograph, that's uh, Passchendaele Ridge. And this is what Ypres looked like from the cockpit of a biplane in 1918. This is uh, a classic Australian um, war photographer took this as an Anzac troop looking at the cathedral. Now, take a notice of this photograph because there's a little rose window there in this, this uh, doorway. And this is what it looks like now. That rose window was a pile of rubble, just like the one in, uh, here in Christchurch. And uh, by 1928, it was up and ready to go. This is from an old um, uh, stereoscope. And if you look carefully, you can see the ruins of the wool uh, house and a, like a, an old Model T car down at the bottom. Uh, Ypres wasn't the only one, but not by a long shot. This is Manchester, after the Luftwaffe took care of it. And uh, the RAF returned the favor in Salzburg. And uh, you can see what it looked like in 1945. It wasn't very pretty, but that's what it looks like now. Uh, just because it's smashed doesn't mean it can't be fixed. Uh, Washington, D.C., we um, had an earthquake last summer. And um, <laughs> There's a very long story about that, and I won't tell it until <clears throat> afterwards when we're drinking beer. Anybody wants to stick around and drink beer with me afterwards, I'll tell you lots of stories. But this, uh, this statue broke off, and um, it's an Anglican cathedral in Washington, D.C. Ironically, the uh, cathedral here in Christchurch donated a significant amount of money to this cathedral's restoration. All right, so this is the transept from the south face. Um, I look at that and I say, that's pretty darn restorable. Compare that to Ypres. Compare that to Manchester. Compare that to Salzburg. It's got a roof. It's got a really fine roof. Uh, the classic uh, rule of thumb, if you're looking at old buildings that have uh, uh, are compromised structurally, look at the ridge line. If that ridge line is straight, odds are that structure is just fine. When you, usually when there's any problem down below, 
it shows up on the ridge line. It waves and it bellies. That thing is just fun. Yep. Well, I whizzed past that one, but south face and looked just fun. All right. <clears throat> the church keeps talking about it, it's about the people, not the buildings, and I agree. It really is about the people. And it's a question of what building would serve the people best. And this is a, the idea of restoring the thing is a very cost-effective way of getting around this. Now, I don't want to get let anybody have the idea that I'm beating up on the church. I didn't come all the way from the United States to beat up on the church. I came to help, to lean a, sh lean a shoulder in, to give the benefit of my experience, and quite frankly, my love. Um, I saw the damage on the television that morning, and I knew there was something I could do to help. Now, cathedrals aren't the only things that get damaged. This is a Amish barn in my native state of Pennsylvania. Um, the Amish, as many of you know, uh, are a Pennsylvania German sect. They are anti-war. <laughs> They're also anti-electricity, anti-cars. Um, what else are they anti? Telephones, internet. No such a thing. They don't do insurance either. Their insurance is each other. So if your barn burns down, a day or night, by the next morning all your neighbors show up and they clean away the, the debris and the carpenters come and they measure up the barn and they figure out what wood needs to be ordered from the sawmill and two weeks later everybody gets together for a barn raising because by that time everything's been fixed the, the timber frame's been cut, ready to go, and then <clears throat> all of a sudden, up she goes. Now, this is not actually a bar Amish barn raising. This is a community barn raising for a museum in Bethlehem that I, I built this barn, redid the foundation, actually I moved this barn from another site. And the reason this series of photographs is here is because I'm talking about buildings are not just building we're not just building the building, we're building the community. This barn raising ha happened on the weekend after the terrorist attacks of September 11th. And <clears throat> when we finished this barn, there wasn't a dry eye in the, the whole group. Um, it's been some 10 years ago and I still get choked up. When I worked with that Amish crew, this is what it looked like the, the next day. We finished the siding, finished the roof. I talked to this old Amishman that I had been working with all day long. And um, I said, it was really great that your community builds these barns so solid and so beautiful. And he said, son, you got it backwards. He said, the barns build the community, not the other way around. And I thought, wow, that's profound. So I've kind of made a career out of dealing with uh, uh, pre-industrial style building in stone and in timber. So we could actually use the farming army uh, model or the student army model that was so wonderful in the early days of the quake here. We could use that same community effort to address parts at least of, of the cathedral. And I'm talking about specifically the bell tower. Um, we had a problem with the steeple. Well, we're not the only church that had a problem with the steeple. This is from the great New England hurricane in 1938. This is what happens over there on the, on the right when uh, you're left, when, <laughs> when you don't fasten a steeple properly, and it comes down and it crashes into the nave. Um, ironically, that church was restored, and that uh, pipe organ still plays every Sunday. Um, now, there's a methodology for building these steeples that was developed in New England where the coastline gets pounded by hurricanes and nor'easters and god-awful gales. And it's not surprisingly based largely on the way tall ships are rigged, where the higher you go, the uh, lighter the spars. Everything is rigged to send it up from below. Um, see the sailor on top of the mast there? That we're sending the mast up through there and it's being lifted up from below. It's, it telescopes right up. Oh, that sailor, by the way, is my wife. She's, she's a tough cookie. Um, so 
the, the big tricks are you, the higher you go, the, uh, the lighter your spars. Uh, you brace things, and you make it so that one piece telescopes into the other as you go up. Now, here's an Anglican cathedral, uh, Anglican church in Rhode Island, Newport, Rhode Island. Newport is a port town. It's obvious that the guys that built this church also built ships because there's ship knees in the, in the steeple and in the church. And these sections here, um, they go down inside each other. That's, that spire up there, it goes down halfway into this section. The upper lantern section comes down into here. This section comes way down into there. So they telescope. It's like grabbing arms like this so that you're not putting one piece on top of the other. You're grabbing them like this. It's a very flexible system. If you get up in one of these steeples in a blow, in, a, in one of those nor'easters, <laughs> it goes around like this because it gives a little bit. Um, put this in perspective. Uh, this is a very long timber framing like this. It's a very long-lived uh, uh, construction method. Um, this thing was built in 1726. To put that in perspective, that was two years before Captain Cook was born in England. George Gilbert Scott, another Englishman, designed Christchurch Cathedral. And his original plan called for <clears throat> a stone bell tower with a wooden steeple. And the beauty of that is, Again, with the, like I talked about the steeples, it's nice and light. has not so much mass up there. It has a little bit of give. And um, we can do it to Gilbert Scott's original plans, or nearly so. So what I propose to do, oh, yeah, my, my, favorite, <laughs> my other favorite New Zealander. Um, so what if it makes a really good steeple? Well, you want to have a wide stance. You want to have a low center of gravity. You want to have a light spire pointing heavy, heavenward. And, and if you have a goofy grin and a, and a bushy tail, it doesn't hurt. Um, the other thing when you're doing these big raisings is uh, with enough rigging and enough people, you can do anything. You can tackle any huge task. And here's another example of a huge task tackled with a lot of tackle. This is raising the obelisk. Uh, in the Vatican, in the St. Peter's Square in the Vatican in 1586. Uh, there were like uh, 1,400 people and 48 capstans, and they raised this thing up. And people in Rome still talk about raising the obelisk. And that's it today. That, that bit right here in the middle is the obelisk. So, my proposal is to build a thing similar to this. It would be the same size, shape, and form as the original, but it would be built out of lighter timber rather than the stone. Um, it would be earthquake resistant. You can't ever make anything earthquake proof, but you sure can make it resistant. And it's, it could be, we could have this up and the bells ringing by the third anniversary of the quake. If we got, a, if we got the go ahead by Christmas, we could have on the, on the 11th of, uh, is it 22nd, 22nd of February uh, in 14, we could have this thing up with the bells ringing. Now, I want you to take a notice of this. It's designed with a mass damper down at the bottom, a big pendulum so that in a shake, look what happens. This doesn't whip like a, like a, uh, like a fishing pole. It just jiggles a little bit. That earthquake that we had, uh, that I showed you the picture of with the National Cathedral, um, I had this thing set up on my kitchen table, and sure enough, it just jiggled in a real earthquake. It was, it was a beautiful thing to see. Um, now, when the quake happened, I was sitting at home in Pennsylvania, I saw it come on the television, and it went around the world that Christ Church was smashed. We get together, put 500 people, and raise this up in the morning, and get the bells ringing by the time it's op ready to open the hangi. That story will go around the world, and it'll send the message that Christchurch is on the mend. I don't pretend that this would be the end of the reconstruction of Christchurch. I wouldn't even be the beginning of the end, but to uh, paraphrase Churchill, it might be the end of the beginning. It'd be a great way to, well, just think about the party we could have. I'm, I'm, I'm serious about that Hong Ek Tu thing. Um, so anyway, so what makes this thing work? Remember I talked about how it telescopes together? 
My, I envision <clears throat> to make it the same size and essentially the same silhouette is to build it in three telescoping sections and to augment the skill base and resource base here, here in Christchurch. I would propose to have our friends around the world help us out with this. There's three sections. We could have one section built in the U.S., one section built in Canada, and one section built by very skilled carpenters in the U.K. Uh, many of the guys that uh, I've tapped for this, if have talked to about this, are the guys that restored Windsor Castle after it burned. Um, and they've already committed to many, many, many man hours of labor, volunteered here at Christ Church, we're glad to, to pitch in. Now they can't come to, they may not be able to come to New Zealand to help, but they could come locally and send their work to Christ Church while we're busy making other things happen. Now you'll notice in this picture over here, this is a cut through section. You can see the, the tel telescoping sections of the steeple. And you'll notice this long chain with this big pendulum. That's what this thing is down here. This is what we call a mass damper. And basically what it does is it puts a load on this so that it's held down, but all the mass is down here so that in a shake, it does this instead of falling over. Uh, just for perspective, see this little guy over here? He's six feet tall. So we're about 290 feet tall there. Um, I'm sorry, I still talk in feet and inches. You'll have to forgive me. So what would it look like? So here are the sections taken apart. This is what it would look like roughly the morning of the raising, if we pull this together. And this over here is what it would look like by 10 AM. Except, see the copper top up there? We'd put the copper top while it was down inside with the cross on and everything. By the time we're ready to listen to the bells and open up the hangi, it would look more like that. Um, these are some shots, just uh, close-up shots of the springs here that allow this to articulate. And a shot from underneath looking up to the bell ringing room. Um, I had the plans carefully um, reviewed by my architect who, until she was comfortable with the plans. You can see how comfortable she got. And my engineering team uh, stress tested the model to make sure it would actually perform. And uh, so if Christchurch is ever attacked by giant chooks, we're all right. And as I said before, this would be the best bleeding party in Christchurch since the end of the Second World War. And Quite frankly, from all the grief and aggravation I've been listening to in Christ Church, you need a party. You need something to look forward to and, and point to and say, by God, we're going to get through this and we're going to get through this together. You have to beat it into you. So, <laughs> what about the rest of the cathedral? I've been yapping on about this bell tower. All right, I, I look at that and I say, yeah, where's the damage? And if you look carefully, there is some damage and it needs to be fixed, and it can be fixed. Uh, this is a barn I did. Have any of you ever had baked beans? You might know the name Heinz. Well, this is one of the Heinz boys that I worked for there. It's a Pennsylvania family. But this barn was in terrible shape. Uh, the timber frame inside was rotten. The, uh, the stonework was all bowed and bellied and leaning, and we didn't, uh, except for the part here where the the guys on the diggers got a little bit uh, heavy-handed and broke out that section. We didn't tear it down. We just shifted it back into place and um, repaired it. And what you have to remember here is, by definition, a stone wall is not a monolith. It's not one stone. It's a polylith. It's many, many stones. So to grab a stone wall, you have to grab all of those stones before you can move it. So you can see here I've I spent quite a long time cribbing up and squeezing this wall so I could grab a hold of it as a package. Ironically, I spent three weeks doing all the timber work and about 45 minutes actually straightening the wall. Uh, this is a shot right through. You can see uh, the, the bit right in front of us um, was bowed out so badly that it was cost effective to just disassemble it. It was only 10 feet of stone, so we deemed it important to just take it down and rebuild it. And that's what it looks like now. Now, the structural work on this whole barn, to take down one barn, move it to the site, cut down the frame, 
fit it to the existing stonework, fix the stonework, get rid of the old barn, was about $200,000. Now, all the other bits and pieces, the gigaws and the, the fancy floor and the, and the underground shooting range that they put in here, that added another $2 million. But the structural part of this thing is very modest for what you got. And that's the same thing with the cathedral. The structural part of this is not that bad. This is another barn I did. This barn dates from 1818. Um, I don't have a lot of pictures of it uh, on this computer in its before stage. That wall was all bellied out, and the, the inside and outside walls had delaminated, and we fixed that all back together. Um, we also found the date board from 1818. It was so weathered, you could hardly see it unless you uh, put a flashlight and shown it sort of sideways. So I built a replica of the original, exactly like the original, and put it in there and gave the original to the owner. Now behind there is a, is a um, time capsule. We put the day's newspaper. Uh, this thing here, that's, that's a bottle of scotch wrapped up there. So in 200 years, somebody's going to have a great drink. Um, so this, although it's a replica, it is an exact replica of the original. So for all practical purposes, it is an original. We've got a George Gilbert Scott cathedral here. George Gilbert Scott did not build that. He never set foot in New Zealand. However, we, if we repair it to his uh, design, it's not a replica. It's a repair. It's, it's, a <laughs> it's the real McCoy, all right? Uh, replica is often used as a pejorative, um, and it's not. It's, it's a perfectly acceptable repair. Um, roofs are really important. This is what happens if you don't let your, if you let your roof go and, and don't fix it for a long time. Uh, this root went all the way down, way down. One of the tricks that you have to do is figure out ways of lifting things up to support the load. These are some innovative tricks that we came up with. Sometimes you, uh, you just figure it out. Uh, I had a long talk with Stefano before the, the lecture here, and it's just delightful, to, the, the, the ingenuity. I think that's why they call them engineers, because they're just ingenious little buggers. Um, how you go about making a thing like this work, and um, it's, it's really one of the great thrills of my life. This is a, uh, that same barn. Um, Pennsylvania bank barns have a, what we call a forebay or an overhang. This, is a, this bit overhangs this wall by about four feet. Well, that wall, for the most part, rotted out. So we took it down, laid it on the ground, disassembled it, fixed all the bits and pieces, reassembled it, and put it up there. And we had about half an inch of play in 80 feet. Uh, again, you'll have to convert to meters. Um, it, was, it was quite interesting. And that's the sort of thing that you can do uh, if you don't mind having to go. And that's it afterwards. You can see the, the, the lap joint in the middle there where the two pieces meet. There was hardly a piece of metal in that whole wall. I've got a, if we're talking about shoring up the cathedral, there's any number of ways of skinning a cat. It's been said that it can't be done I'm going to show you two very plausible methodologies for doing it, and you could mix and match bits and pieces from either of these. This would work. Um, what I'm proposing here is uh, essentially a beachhead frame. This is the first thing that you put. Let me back up. The two methodologies, one is like sieging a castle, where you each step you get closer and closer until you've got the castle. The other one is like mining, where you go in with under protection and you just keep going in like you're digging a mine. So you can see the, the parallels here. So the first step of the siege is you build these towers and you put them up against the wall. I'm going to run through these quickly. You, you uh, put some heavy blocks down there to stabilize it. So your worker is working on that catwalk. The only way that if, if it fails in an earthquake, the only way it can fail is in and not into your people. So the people are always outside the building. You, from the catwalk, you open up the roof and you lower in these posts. And then from up above, you lower in 
timbers that run this way, just like crossing yard arms on a sailing ship. I mean, everybody here has uh, crossed yard arms on a sailing ship, haven't they? Well, it's not that hard. Anyway, you keep going, and then you put this flying brace up there, and you, again, poke another hole in the upper roof, put this timber in there. And I use timber because it's flexible, it's soft on the stone, it's really, really strong. And we've got plenty of it, and it's good quality stuff that's growing here in New Zealand. Put another one on the inside. Again, same thing on the other side. You, uh, and you also, and, and you'll notice, I'm not putting anybody inside. We're bolting through the window openings. We're, we're not going inside. And then once that's all in place, you can run a tension member along the whole of the building so that you've got it both in compression and in tension. So you've really, really got, Stefano, what do you think? Does that, you think that would work? All right, absolutely. All right, so, and that's a, uh, a SketchUp model of it um, in a wire diagram. You can see, it take a small forest of timber, but afterwards, after we fix the cathedral, all that timber can get reused. It's not getting all chucked out. We can remill it. We can turn it into houses for the poor or a, a you know, chapter house or hell, the bishop's house. I don't care. Um, now, a couple of things I would caution. The, the seismic, uh, the, the report that just came out yesterday, I was delighted to see that they were planning for seismic events on the horizon of 2,500 years. Now, what's the worst that can happen in 2,500 years? Well, whatever it is, we're going to build for that. So my thing is, all right, let's build with the materials that we know are going to have a track record, or we have every likelihood that they're going to last for a 1,000-year-plus time frame. And to my mind, that means stone, wood, iron, stainless steel, bronze, copper, things that I know I trust. Now, Stefano was talking about carbon fiber. Yeah. Portland cement, I'm, I'm a little dubious. I'm open-minded enough that but we, whatever we do, it's got to be compatible with what's there and the, the time span. All right, so we got this beautiful thing. Stefano, raise your hand. This man back here helped put, pull this together, and it's a beautiful piece of work. It's a proposal, not a proposal, but a, a vision for how another way that the cathedral could be uh, reinforced and, and restored. So I'm going to come, hmm, how can I do this? All right, escape, there we go. So I'm going to come over here. All right, so this is the um, proposal that came out yesterday where they're essentially, and Stefano, don't hesitate to speak up, we're attacking the cathedral from the west wall, there's so much damage there, take out the, the uh, west porch, and basically using a shield, a, a, a tortoise, or a cribbing, if you will, like in a, in, a, in a mine, advance that, clean it out, advance, 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 and keep, as every step, keep, uh, I messed that up, didn't I? All right, let's go back here. All right. Where did I go? Uh-huh. Here we go. So you can see as we go to each step, it gets further and further into the cathedral, and we're reinforcing the side walls and the roof and providing the kind of shoring that you need to make that thing stable. And hey, look at that. Nobody's in an unsafe place. You're always protected. All right. So we got two ways of addressing this safely. One in which you're always working in a protected place, and the other one where you're always working outside of the cathedral until such time as it's shored up. So the idea that it can't be done safely, I think uh, that's a moot point. <clears throat> now, back to where we were. Come on. All right. So. One of the things I want to talk about just quickly is this. All right. Slideshow. Current slide.
side. Okay. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the way stone walls work. And that is, they work basically by friction. Mortar is not a glue. Mortar is a bedding agent. It's a pillow. It's a thing that takes up the irregularities and provides a, a really good uh, connection. Not a connection, but a What's the word I'm looking for? It just takes up the irregularities between the stones. Now, there's no mortar in between these blocks, all right? The only thing that's holding it together is the fact that I've got a tension rods that go right through to the base here, and they're squeezing down. Now, think about this. If you took a, a pile of coins in your hand and you held it out, you could press with your other hand until the cows come home, and it would never go anywhere. But you shake your hand, and that pile of coins is going to fall right down. All right? Now, if you take that same pile of coins and you pinch it between your thumb and your forefinger, you could shake until the cows come home again, and they're not going to fall anywhere. And the same thing's here. Look, that's just a little bit of post tensioning. All right? Uh, if you take these things off here, these, these thumb screws, the whole thing falls to pieces. All right? I don't have any mortar in there, and that's exactly the kind of uh, approach that we could be using to make these heritage buildings that everybody's so afraid of, make them quite safe, all right? Now, I don't think we're going to have too many earthquakes that are going to shake any worse than that, all right? So how do you do that in an existing building? Well, there's your existing building where it's a slice right through. And with diamond tip uh, boring machinery that we have now that they didn't have in the 1870s, we can bore a nice straight hole cleanly right through into the, into the foundation. Once you've done that, with, again with diamond tools that we have now, those diamond chainsaws, uh, you can cut a slice into the wall and put in a plate that looks like this. Now you notice the plate is a little bit smaller diameter than the hole that we've drilled and that's because we're going to put a rod down through that. See this hole that's drilled? That's an inspection hole with fiber optic uh, um, observation tools, cameras. We can put a, a probe in there and watch to make sure that the rod that's coming down from the hole lines up perfectly with that plate and goes through. And you'll see why in just a second. This is the rod going down through the, the stone wall. And you'll notice this is the rod coming down and there's this little wedgy thing way down at the bottom. Well, that's really important because that wedge, when you drive it to the bottom, it spreads that rod because there's a saw kerf in that rod so that when you lift it up again, it fetches up on that steel rod and you grab the bottom of that stone wall just like we did with the model. And that allows you to grab the bottom of the stone wall, allows you to put that whole thing in, comp in compression with the tension rod, and you don't have to dig underneath there and put a nut down at the bottom end of it. So this is a, a straight, this, <laughs> this is a trick that sailors use all the time for putting the hull planking on wooden sailing ships. We call this a fox wedge. Um, now, I've, I come from a part of the world where we've had some of the earliest uh, Portland cement kilns uh, from the, about the 1880s. And in our area, we had an awful lot of uh, concrete bridges built. And they're now falling to pieces. I've got a little piece of video I want to show you in just a second. Now, I understand that we have much better concretes now. And so if, we, if that really is the case, let's be very careful about the mixes that we put into a building that we want to last 1,000 years. Um, lime mortars have this amazing capacity. They're very ancient mortars, the kind that cathedrals and castles were classically built with. What the Anglican Cathedral is built with is a lime mortar. The beauty of that is if you get it wet, if while you're boring down for the, all these holes, if you load it full of water, and preferably lime water, which is a con uh, saturated solution of, of calcium hydroxide, you set up this matrix where the water inside that thing is completely full of lime, as much as it'll carry. And when it dries out, the lime comes out of solution and bridges across all those little cracks, just like st stalactites and stalagmites in a cave. Um, while there's a, a lot of the work would have to be done 
with uh, skilled masons and skilled carpenters, there's a lot of opportunity for volunteer assistance. Um, it's, it's remarkable how much you can get out of a volunteer corps and teach the next generation. Uh, there's lots of uh, opportunities for base isolators and selective use of epoxies. Uh, so we get uh, a really high performance uh, repair. Now, we are going to have to do some demolition. Um, we're not going to have to tear the whole thing down to within two meters of the ground. But there are going to be sections that we have to disassemble so that we can fix it and reassemble it. Uh, surgically, you can cut flesh away as a surgeon or you can cut it away as a butcher. And uh, I think the cathedral deserves some careful surgery. Um, yeah, so this is a piece of Portland cement, and I'll have to show you the video at the end. Again, I'm talking about uh, the lime coming out of solution and bridging across gaps. This is a cave down the road from my house. We have lots of limestone in my neck of the woods. And um, the stalactites and stalagmites are like, it, it's amazing how tough those are. And that's exactly what you get with autonomic healing in lime mortars. Um, this is a wall you may have heard of. It's this little, the back paddocks in China. They, they use this to keep the sheep in. Um, and I was just in China last month. And I had read uh, about six months ago about uh, the fact that the Chinese for 1,500 years have used, been using sticky rice as an amendment to their mortar mixes. And I had the privilege of seeing a section of the Great Wall of China that was right on a fault line, and you could see where the fault line was. And I went and looked at the mortar, and it was great shape. It was just it was amazing. There was just enough flex in it that as it crept, it was, it was, it was cool. So I'm, I am doing further research on sticky rice mortars. Um, I am. I am, uh, as a matter of fact, one of my colleagues in China is a, is a doctoral candidate, and he's doing his dissertation on sticky rice mortars. In, and they've been using them for 1,500 years. It's, it's pretty amazing. And I had never heard of this until six months ago. So I think this is something that we, now, <laughs> I was talking to one of the masons, and he said, now, the other trick that we use is, in, in addition to the sticky rice, we use the juice of, a, and he told me what berry it was in Chinese, and he had it translated, and it was the Chinese gooseberry. We looked it up. You know what the name, of the, the, the more common name nowadays for the Chinese gooseberry is? The kiwi fruit. Yeah. So they were using kiwi fruit juice to help make their mortar. I haven't figured out how that, the chemistry of that works, but I will find it out. All right. Now, there's been a lot of talk about using the cathedral as a prayer garden or a monument for the earthquake victims. I submit that it's too valuable a piece of real estate. Uh, a city, a cathedral city needs a cathedral at its heart. Uh, it's a living, breathing cathedral, just like the folks in Ypres believed. Um, by the way, parenthetically, the British government, under, uh, led by Winston Churchill, wanted to keep all of Ypres as a, as a uh, ruins in, uh, as a memorial to British forces, the Belgians said, no, we need our cathedral back. So, um, but this is a lich gate. A lich gate was a place in uh, Anglican architecture where you brought the bodies, the liches, the corpses, in and waited for the priest to come to bring it in to be buried. And in rural England, you see these at Anglican churches all over the place, usually with a stone wall around it. And one of the things that occurred to me was, we don't have one at the cathedral. It would be a beautiful thing to put over on the south side by the ossuary, build it out of reclaimed timber from the, the earthquake. The stone, the, use the bits and pieces from the bell tower that couldn't be, can't be reused in the rebuild. The broken pieces of Omaru limestone, well, how about we carve the names of the dead and let their families set that stone in the wall? And that could be a beautiful, permanent memorial to the, to the earthquake and still allow the cathedral to be a living, breathing, honest-to-God cathedral. Um, and a wall of remembrance, and you can see how the, the Lich Gate might uh, uh, relate to the south entrance there. And uh, it's not the best rendering, but you get an idea. Now, 
I've heard talk about, wow, we could just sort of make, make a mix of old and the new, tear it down, use some of the bits and pieces. Mixing old and new sometimes doesn't work so well, you know? You gotta be kind of careful with what you're doing. Dr. Frankenstein had some, had a mess. That's about all I've got for tonight. I think I've prattled on quite enough. How did I do for my 45 minutes? Terrible. <laughs>